Hello guys and welcome, it is the SRB2 Dude here today bringing you yet another Splatoon 2 video because we have incoming Splatoon 2 patch notes. Patch version 2.2 is on the horizon on the 17th of January, just before G5, which is annoying because we're going to have to learn a new meta uh, before we even play the new meta. But either way, this is a major balance patch for a bunch of main weapons, sub weapons, and a few special weapons. With that being said, I'm briefly going to skim through some of the patch notes that we have here. So starting with the main weapons, the Splattershot Jr. now paints better under your feet. You know, just a little buff allows you to paint better under your feet. Really nice for mobility. For the horizontal and vertical flick with the Dynamo Roller, the damage has been increased from 150 to 108. The distance of damage for the horizontal swing has been increased by 21% and the distance for the damage for the vertical swing has been increased by 11%. This of course is just because of the overall damage for the Dino Roller being increased. The Flingzer Roller now has a widened painting radius for the vertical swing. The distance of damage for a vertical swing that does 100 damage has now been increased by 11% and the distance for 50% of damage has now been increased by 13%. Meaning overall that the vertical swing for the Flingzer Roller has just much stronger overall. Which honestly is very much needed because the Flingzer Roller's vertical swing has always been really really weak and you just feel like it needed more damage and now it does that but you know how much really is 11% or 13%? We're gonna just have to find out when the patch comes out. The ink brush now has an increased movement speed while swinging the brush by 67%. I'm not really too sure how this is gonna look honestly because I've seen very very few ink brushes so it's a really interesting buff so I'm looking forward to see what that has in store for us. Now these two are really cool buffs. The classic squiffer and the bamboozler now have an increased charging speed while in the air by 100%. Now this is something you've never seen in Splatoon or has never been seen in Splatoon before. Basically, if you jump in the air and you start charging, it's gonna charge like it's normal, like if you're on the floor. So if you're falling like 40 feet in the air, you can do a 100% charge and then go for that trick shot snipe. Honestly, these are two really nice buffs for these two weapons. Considering these two weapons are barely used in this metagame right now, this gives these two weapons something that can be really useful. So going into the next weapon, my god, the GooTuber might not just be a huge meme anymore. I may just be overreacting, but who knows? So basically, with the GooTuber, there is now an increased overall damage when not fully charged by 63%. What this means is that you can inflict 100% damage while not being fully charged. You can obtain this while you are 71% charged with the GooTuber. Now that in itself is really strong, it basically gives damage up to a GooTuber. But it's also another thing where you want to be careful with it, because there is also a reduced velocity distance of the bullet just before a full charge by 5%. So meaning bullet travel is going to be a little bit slower if you are not fully charged. The Sasha gets a few changes. After shooting, the time restricted of movement has been shortened by 4 frames. Meaning after every single slush you are 4 frames faster. The painting radius for the Sasha has also been increased closer to the feet and slightly further. Meaning you'll be able to paint under your feet much better and you'll also be able to paint a little bit more once you slush at its furthest range. Uh, this doesn't mean that the damage has been increased, it only means like how far the ink goes has been, you know, been increased. So going into the next weapon, the Heavy Splatling, damage has been increased from 28 to 32 damage. Now you may think this doesn't really do too much, but it's more for the Heavy Splatling Deco. Considering the Heavy Splatling Deco does have bubbles, it allows it to have more control on how lit the bubbles are. No pun intended there, but that's pretty much how it is. Yeah. Now the Doolies are having a huge amount of buffs all around. Let's just start with the buff all around for Doolies. That would include the Dapple Doolies, Splat Doolies, uh, Glogger Doolies, and Dually Squelcher. The hitbox for bullets have been expanded slightly, making it a little bit easier to hit players. So this would mean that bullet hit detection on players are going to be much more consistent. Really nice buff for the Doolies overall, considering at times you would be shooting at someone and it feels like that majority of the, your bullets are just going past your opponent instead of actually hitting them. So with that overall buff being said, let's go down to the three remaining Doolies that also had some extra buffs, including the one I just said. So starting with the Dapple Doolies, there has been a reduced ink consumption by 17%, 
and there has also been a reduced dodgement movement lag for shooting and using sub-weapons by about 4 frames. This has actually been buffed again and it only makes your dodge roll even more powerful as you have much more quicker movement options. For the regular Splat Dualies, this also has received the reduced dodge roll movement lag for shooting and using sub-weapons by 4 frames. Once again, you can do stuff out of your dodge roll just much quicker. For the Glogger Dualies, there has been reduced ink consumption by 11% and there's also been a reduced bullet shake just after shooting. Translated from Japanese to English, I have no clue what that means. I'm pretty sure it has something to do from after a dodge roll, but... In all, honesty, in all honesty, I don't know what that means. Please in the comment section below tell me what you think that means or if anybody is Japanese can actually explain that to me in the comment section because I would like to know. So that is pretty much all for main weapons. Now let's get into the sub weapons which only pretty much include three bombs. And they're actually really good nerfs. Uh, they're only including three bombs. It is just for splat bombs, suction bombs and curling bombs. There has now been a reduced blast radius of damage over 30 damage by 13%. This includes the Splat Bomb and Curling Bomb, the Suction Bomb is 11%. This is a very much needed nerf because you could throw a bomb very very far away from something that can be damaged from that bomb and it will inflict 30 damage from just a very stupid far radius range, I don't even know what to say. I guess you can tell from me I've run into a bunch of situations with Splat Bombs, Curling Bombs, Suction Bombs and they would blow up from a very far radius and I would still get killed because it would always inflict 30 damage from just very far away. Finally this has been nerfed, very very much needed, I am happy about this one. Also for Curling Bombs there has been an increased delay of ink recovery after using a bomb by 15 frames, that is actually a pretty big nerf for curling bombs, meaning you're not going to be able to spam them as much as you were able to do before. Now there are two special weapon changes. This includes the curling bomb launcher, uh, extended duration by 40 frames. Only one weapon has the curling bomb launcher at this point in time, but just to let you know, 40 frames is the equivalent of two thirds of a second. So it's not the biggest buff, but I guess it allows you to throw one more extra curling bomb. For Bubble Blower is actually really interesting and probably much needed as well. The Bubble Blower is now much easier to destroy when the bubbles are smaller. Now just from this, I feel like it's going to be a mandatory thing for people who use Bubble Blower to use Optic Shredder. Like beforehand you didn't really need it, beforehand you didn't really need it because you can control your bubbles decently enough, but now I feel like it's going to be an essential thing to make sure your bubbles are always afloat. If you can maintain your bubbles to be huge then you won't have any problems, but once they are smaller your enemies can take advantage of them. But that's pretty much it for all the weapons, but the last thing I really want to get into is the main weapon special gauge performance. Now I'm going to show you this list here and I'm only going to be ticking two of them that are really get taking the hit. And that is the NZAP and the Forge Splattershot Pro. The NZAP has gone up from 190 to 210 special points for you to get an ink armor. Now this is actually very much needed, like we've all been talking about that the NZAP might need a nerf. I didn't think the weapon itself needed enough, but just how fast it can actually acquire special is what really it really it needed enough for. So the developers have done that, thankfully, because this was really needed because you could spam ink armor so quickly it was just insane. The Forge Spanish Pro, it is now from 180 special points to 200 special points. Now personally for me, it's not too bad because I don't run any special charge at all, but with this uh, nerf, I'm going to need to run special charge and I do have space for it to you know, make sure it works for all the builds I use. But definitely special charge is going to be a thing that's going to be needed for the Forge Pro. The weapon itself is still really good too, like nothing has been changed with that and I would love them to just to keep it that way because it doesn't exactly need that. Like I feel like in this meta it's, it's pretty much balanced. So overall with all the patches, all the nerfs, all the buffs, I think this is a really good balance patch. What I would like to see is them do something with the Elia because it's still such a weak weapon. There is no reason for anybody to use an Elia. Like personally for me, if the Earl was going to buff the Elia, I would just straight up buff the range. Make it be able to shoot as far as it did like in Splatoon 1. Like the main problem with Splatoon 1's Elia was that 
With damage up, it could be a half charge shot. In Splatoon 1, nobody ran an E-Leader that had to full charge every shot because it was just not needed and it wasn't as strong. Damage up was the reason for why the E-Leader in Splatoon 1 was so strong. And right now in Splatoon 2, considering it doesn't really have too much range, it mean the range difference from this E-Leader to the Splat Charger is really, isn't, it's not far off. And also with the Splat Charger, considering you have Stingray, you can shoot as far as you want anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I just really want the Elia to have something. Let the Elia shoot far. It's something it really needs because at this point, there's no point to use it. And that is pretty much it. Uh, I guess one thing I, I should add as well is, I guess, the Forge Pro. Do I think it's RIP? No, I don't. I think it's going to be fine. I feel like it's more balanced, if anything. So I feel like the Forge Pro is going to be fine. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed these early thoughts of mine for patch 2.2. It's gonna be coming out on the 17th. Looking forward to it. It's gonna... Unfortunately, it has to be just before Genesis. Learning a new meta in a tournament, not easy. But we'll pull through. It's gonna be fun. Anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please, if you did, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Both in the description below. Do it for both if you're feeling generous. And as always, guys, this has been that SRB2, dude. And I shall see you guys in a future video.